Hello everyone, it's me, Phil, from One Wall Studio, and I'm here today to dispel a myth that lossless files degrade. I've gotten a comment recently saying that uh, with digital, much like tape, the quality of a file will degrade over time, and also with subsequent tapings or renderings. Now, I have here a lossless file that I just threw together uh, real quickly on in the heat of the moment, and I have the, the song titled It's the Same Every Time. It's only a one minute long track. Here's what we're going to do today. First, I'm going to break off why this myth exists. And second off, I'm going to dispel the myth with an absurd amount of rendering. So I'm mostly going to skip through a lot of it because rendering isn't super exciting to look at, but I am going to use all the techniques available to me in order to dispel this myth or break down that myth. All right. So first things first, I'm going to show you why this myth might exist by rendering this to MP3 approximately eight times. Importantly, I'm going to be doing this to MP3 so that we can see what happens and the difference between a lossless and a lossy rendering. One fun thing I'm going to do to make this a lot easier on myself is click the Add Rendered Items to New Track in Project button here on the Render dialog so that every time I do this, it just tosses it in here and we continue to render in the most lossy way possible. I am curious to hear the difference between eight times MP3 encoding and uh, lossless. And already we're beginning to see some changes. Multiple encoding processes of MP3, a lossy format, are starting to incur some clipping. And on the fifth pass, there's more clipping than there was before in the fourth pass. But there was none in the original. Now here we are finally at pass eight. So pass eight should sound significantly different than pass one because we've re-rendered it to a lossy format eight times. Let's hear the difference between the lossless and the lossy. So even though I've rendered it eight times, I was rendering it at the maximum possible quality as afforded by MP3. So there's not a ton of difference. There's a little bit more uh, sizzle in the high end in the uh, lossless version, and it feels a little bit less compressed, even though it's a pretty smashed master. So one thing I like to do is I like to take these, do the null test to invert them and see how much different the eighth pass is from the original wave. You can really see that the high end in particular was massively affected by the wave and uh, by the MP3 encoding. Because this is what it sounds like when you hear the difference. There's a lot of washiness in the top end, which is common amongst MP3s. But you also have some low end getting lost as well. So that washiness is what happens when you do lossy encoding, in this case, eight times in a row. Now let's try and see how much the original differs from the very first MP3 recording. By the eighth recording, the digital noise incurred by the lossy encoding process eight times over has gotten a lot louder. We see a massive gain in digital noise that doesn't affect you too much while you're listening to the MP3 itself, but it is noticeable if you try to null it against the original. So that's eight times lossy decoding at the best possible bit rate that you can get with MP3. Now let's try this a different way. First things first, I'm going to try this again in an extremely lossy way. Instead of being at a maximum bit rate, I'm going to try and get it to uh, a constant bit rate and 
I'm just going to make it the fastest in code possible and make it about 192 kilobits per second, which is what you'd get on Spotify. So let's render this and let's start this process one more time. But let's see how much different it'll be if I get an average bitrate as opposed to the best possible bitrate afforded us by MP3. And already we're beginning to see true peak clips on only the second pass of lossy at a, an average bit rate. Very cool. Not as many as I was expecting, though. And now it's going backwards in terms of peaking. There are now fewer peaks and clips than there were in the second and third encoding. And now there's only two. Let's see if it gets rid of all of them on the eighth. Ooh, still two. All right, so now let's solo the last one, the eighth one, and hear how much different it is from the lossless. Oh, that's terrible. Absolutely disgusting. So let's hear how it sounds if we were to null test this baby. Keep in mind, this is eight passes of lossy encoding at only 192 kilobits per second per encode. So let's do this. Oh, you can see that almost the entire song is different. That's horrific. What about each step of the way? But by the end, almost the whole thing is just discussing wash and noise. Oh, listen to that. That terrible crushing. Compared to the original? All right, so we all knew that that would happen because that's a very lossy encoding method. However, and this is where it's going to get fun, let's try yet one more time, but this time we're doing it lossless. So I'm going to choose the exact same bit depth and the exact same format and the exact same everything I possibly can in order to show you that when you render losslessly, no matter how many times you render that export, it should theoretically maintain the exact same quality and perfectly null. So let's try it out, shall we? Are you keeping an eye on the detailed information from the renders? We've got one more to go. If you don't mind, make your predictions in the comments below and see if this works out the way that we hope it will. All right, the moment of truth has come. I have rendered and re-rendered eight times the exact same file in WAV format with the exact same parameters as the file was initially rendered in. So let's see if there's a difference between the eighth pass of rendering with a null test. And would you look at that? It is playing and nothing is coming out. After eight passes of lossless rendering, it has perfectly nulled. I guess that dispels that myth or breaks that myth down for you. Now, if you want to know why that is, I can explain it to you in a couple of words. So here I have every single version of the project that we worked on thus far in their own little tabs up here in order to show you what I mean. So the first thing is first, 
The original lossless WAV file has all of the information as rendered by the DAW. It is lossless, so what goes out is exactly what goes into this file. So the stereo bus render is identical to the project file, the session file, whatever you want to call it. And it will null if you were to take it, export it, drop it into the original session, do some tweaking so that it doesn't interface with the master bus, and then you were to null it. It just would unless you had nonlinear effects causing any differences between the session at one point in time versus another. Some analog modeling plugins do introduce nonlinear elements like noise or a variable curve for compression or distortion that will cause it to act a little bit different every time you open it up, kind of like analog did. But barring those exceptions, this render will be the exact same if you render it from the original session multiple times. The farther you get from the original, though, when it comes to encoding and recoding over and over again, the way they null is very minute. And you can hear that in the ending piece right here, where you can see ever so slightly a higher noise floor caused by the MP3 encoding. Same thing with the opening. Before there's any sound at all, there's noise generated by how many respective MP3 renders this is undergone. You'll notice that this phenomenon is especially powerful when you're comparing the lossiest version to the least lossy version. So if we were to solo this and this, the loss and dynamic range also actually causes a difference in the volume level, even on the quietest noises. So over here, you actually see that it's at like negative 36.1. And this is at negative 34.2. So what that means is there's been about two decibels lost of information from even this tiny quiet moment. And when you look at it that way, that means that it's going through a lot of throwing out bits and uh, smoothing them over, replacing them with digital noise to some extent that creates that washy effect that you're used to hearing from too many layers of lossy encoding. So the huge difference that you hear in these sections, you also notice that you've lost overall one to two decibels in the most loud parts, while at other times you're gaining noisier decibels. That volume difference is caused by the MP3 encoding going in and stripping information in order to create a smaller file. Now it does that every single time without fail. On the main one, you have a higher bit rate. We had it set to 320 kilobytes per second. However, with an even loss of your bit depth and bit rate, you're going to get an even smaller file, but it's still going to keep making that file smaller the same way as it did before. So you're always going to end up with the same bit rate per second in the final file size. But what it's doing is it's re-rendering and each time it's finding different things to do to get it down to that size. It's gonna keep crushing certain aspects of it in a lossy way, thereby increasing the amount of information lost, which is why it's called lossy because you're losing a lot of information every single time you render to MP3 at a much lower bit depth. Because at 192 kilobits per second, you're literally taking a stream that, when it's a WAV file, might at the lowest be 2,116 kilobits per second. And you're cutting it down to literally 9% of the size of the file, which means you're getting rid of so much and because MP3 as a format isn't smart when you're encoding to it, it's not like it's going to look in and say, oh, wait, this is already encoded to a lower bit depth and a bit rate. You're literally going in and tossing things out every time to make it that file size. So it's just going to keep doing the same things over and over again until eventually it's so artifacted that it is impossible to hear in a normal way, as you could see by the amount of wash that happened after eight respective passes. So all that to be said, it doesn't matter how many times you render a WAV file because you're going to get a lossless file out of it. You're going to get the same size of file every time, provided it's going to be the same format, same bit depth, same sample rate, because you're not losing anything. But MP3 is going to continually make the same adjustments and compression choices every respective time to ensure that it's the same file size time after time again at a lower sample rate or bit depth or whatever you're rendering down to. It makes the same choices over and over again.
Now, this all depends, of course, on your encoder and what your encoder choices are. And as you can see initially, doing the maximum possible bitrate doesn't get rid of as much information time and time again as going for a lower bitrate. And ultimately, you'll find that there is a lot that you can do with MP3s unless they're a lower bitrate. So if you were to render MP3s to wave, you'd actually get no difference between the MP3 that you rendered and a wave file. So let me demonstrate that right now, because once you've lost it, you can't gain it back. But because it's a lossless format, it should theoretically be no different than the MP3 you rendered it from. And it nulls perfectly. Because a lossless file will always null with whatever you used to render it. Now, there are a couple of minor exceptions here. You'll notice that there's little bursts, especially right around here. where there's a slight difference and possibly just a simple encoding error. Notice that the volume levels are the same. They completely null. So with that in mind, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them in the comments below. If you have any other myths that you'd like me to dispel or any other problems that you want to see solved from an audio standpoint, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. And as always, I'm Phil from One Wall Studio, thanking you, signing out, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.